Hey everybody, Icy Cat here with the first operator profile for Burnt Horizon. We'll start by taking a look at the Australian attacker Gridlock. With her strong weapons and anti-roamer gadget, among other uses, we're going to take a look at how to make the most out of her loadout and abilities. Gridlock is the newest attacker in Operation Burnt Horizon from Australia. She's a slow one speed but resilient three armor operator with a loadout that packs a solid punch. Her first primary is the F90, which is pretty much a variant of IQ and Kaid's AUG. It does an average of 38 damage with a controllable 740 rate of fire and a 30 round magazine. It's fairly precise and easy to manage recoil. The other choice is the M249 Saw LMG. It hits hard at 48 damage with a slower rate of fire of 650, though that's not necessarily a bad thing. This is a magazine-fed LMG instead of belt-fed, which means it holds a bit less ammo at a time, but reloads way faster with its 60-round capacity. You'll also notice that interesting scope that sits on top. It's really similar to the one we saw on the sidearm for Nomad and Kaid last season. This is the sight you're going to want to use whenever you pick this weapon. It delivers nearly perfect visual acuity. There is very little on-screen blockage from aiming with this and makes for incredibly accurate single tap or short burst shots. You can also now find this new scope on Capito's LMG as well. For secondaries, she'll join the small number of operators that can take a backup short range shotgun. The Super Shorty does 35 damage and its capacity is pretty limited at only holding 3 shells at a time, but it's not so much as a weapon that makes it useful as it is in the role as a tool for making quick murder holes to peek through or popping hatches for rotations and flanks on the fly. If you're wanting more damage at longer range, you can always go with the SDP 9mm handgun. Clocking in at 47 damage and a 16 round capacity, it stacks up well against other handguns. Secondary gadgets will be either smoke grenades or breaching charges. The smoke grenades complement her ability better, and if you take the shotgun, you can still punch holes in floors and walls, not to mention hatches. So smoke grenades are probably going to be the better choice overall in most situations. So what exactly is her gadget? She tosses out a kind of oversized mechanical grenade that deploy these Trax Stingers, kind of an expandable spike strip in hexagon form. The first one starts where the grenade lands, and then it spits them out in a circle surrounding that one. Then each of those spits out one more until it fills the outer perimeter. In an open area like this, it will fill out fully. If it's in a restricted area like a stairwell or things like furniture are filling the area, it fills wherever there's room. They will even spread out across multiple heights if they're able to. While the grenade itself is big and bulky, it's still going to fit in the gaps between floor beams and spread out. This can be an effective way to seed the objective site from above, or even safely close off a high traffic hallway or rotation point from the floor above or below. While even just one will fill a large area, they're taken out pretty easily. Just shooting them will take them out. You can even stop the distribution after it started by shooting out the one that's currently spreading them out. A couple more might come out from other ones, but you can stop the overall pattern if you're fast enough. A single bullet is all it takes, but as a defender, you'll be giving away your position to do so. If you want to be quieter about it, you can melee them. It still makes a small sound, but is much quieter, with the trade-off of also being a little slower to clear a path. If speed is more of a concern than sound, then explosives are the way to go. A nitro or impact grenade will clear out most, if not all, of a single track's area of coverage. One trick you can use to safely toss these into the objective is to blow open the area above a reinforcement panel on sites that have walls that extend higher than that and toss it in to fill the other side, either causing damage or at least restricting maneuverability before you push the site. Similarly, you can do this on drone vents too, but you're going to be causing half of the tiles to expand on your side of the wall and may not be the best use, although in certain situations it's better than nothing. One obnoxious thing is that they don't always reliably land flat and will just roll around without ever dispersing. Hopefully this is something they fix in a future patch because frankly, it's just unacceptable when it happens as you waste your gadget utility for something that's out of your control. Now while these spikes never harm attackers, the defenders will always take 10 points of damage per individual Trax tile they step on. Nothing changes this. One armor operators take 10 points. Three armor operators take 10 points. Three armors wearing Rook armor still take 10 points. Even falling from a height onto it or being Nomad blasted into it will still only cause 10 points. And no, even if a Nomad pushes you into several, destroying them all, you only still take the single 10 points until you get back up again. Not all of them fully expand when they deploy as they try to fill all available space. Even these smaller ones still cause the full 10 points of damage if they come into direct contact. Now the tracks cause problems for a few operators in particular. 
any cloaked vigil will have to reveal themselves either by destroying the spikes or by stepping on them as it will also cause his cloak to turn off when he takes the damage. Another operator that runs into problems is Cav. Her silent step does not allow her to cross through unaffected, but not only that, it also causes her ability to turn off as soon as she makes contact with it. Fortunately for her, at least her silenced pistol is a bit quieter of a way to deal with taking them out. Then there's Clash. She has no way to deal with a field of spikes in front of her unless she puts away her shield to shoot them or throws an impact grenade. Her shock damage does not destroy the devices, so she can't deal with it from safety. She needs to decide if she wants to just cross and take the damage, retreat and find another way, or drop her guard to take them out while leaving herself vulnerable. Now Mute can't do anything to stop the deployment. It's not an electronic gadget since it deploys mechanically, so jammers are not a counter. Surprisingly, neither are Jaeger ADS units. Even though the grenade is a projectile and the spreading tiles are too, it completely ignores them. Honestly, this was probably a balancing decision on Ubisoft's part rather than simply following logic of how his device works. They probably thought he counters so many things already and this would just be yet another thing he can shut down. We've heard them discuss some similar concepts behind making Thatcher start to disable things more than outright destroy them because it was just countering too much as more and more ops got added. Maestro has some hit or miss interactions with the spike strips, literally. Here you can see the Trax tiles are easily destroyed, except for these last couple for some reason that don't want to go down. Now in this case, it seemed like almost none of the traps were getting destroyed other than that one stray one. Although it's not 100% clear what's going on here for sure, there seems to be some kind of alignment issue with how they land on the floor. If for any reason they distribute and the model intersects with the floor even the smallest bit, you might not be able to shoot them with only the turret laser. It seems fine most of the time, but occasionally you'll wind up with these weird situations where you can't do anything about it. Another operator who won't destroy the spike strips is Bandit's Shockwire. The two devices can coexist in the same space at the same time. They don't interact at all. Attackers would only take the 3 points of shock damage, and defenders would only take the 10 points of spike damage. There's no layering of the effects across the two sides. One interesting way you can take advantage of it though, is by hiding them inside the barbed wire. The most effective way to conceal it is to actually destroy most of them. That's a bit counterintuitive, but by only leaving the ones that are actually inside the wire and leaving no spikes outside the wire, they really blend right in. Kind of like how you can somewhat conceal a frost trap in barbed wire if the attacker isn't paying close attention. It's the same principle here. You're not actually making it invisible or anything, you can still see it easily if you look closely. But most defenders are just going to write it off as being part of the barbed wire and rush right over it without paying attention. It might seem like a waste to destroy the majority of them just to hide a couple, but a couple that might do damage because they are concealed may be more valuable than a whole bunch of them that are in the open and just get avoided or destroyed. It depends on the strategy. Blocking a retake of the site by concealing them could be very situational, while using them in the open as an anti-roamer or anti-flanking device that reroutes the defenders or causes them to make noise may be more valuable in other situations. Speaking of site retakes, Gridlock's gadget is really useful for that too. Planting a bomb diffuser and then flooding the area with spikes can be very effective. It can easily work well for secure area objective retakes the same way. Since Gridlock also carries smoke grenades, you can see that it becomes incredibly effective to combine the two in these situations, as you've now taken the ability for the defenders to destroy the spikes out of the equation unless they do a blind impact grenade throw or something. Another thing you can do is when you're on the receiving end of these, consider not reacting and just taking the 10 points of damage if you have to. In this situation, the attacker knew I was in this half of the objective site somewhere, but not exactly where. Rather than revealing my exact position by shooting the canister before it could finish dispersing, I decided to just let it give me the 10 points of damage to keep a little uncertainty of my exact location and continue to hold my angle. There's definitely a lot of ways that Gridlock's track spikes can change the flow of the game. In examples like this, by flooding an area with spikes and smoke, you leave a camping defender with little maneuverability to respond to you until they've dealt with it first. You can toss them through holes in walls and floors to seed the site from safety. You can even throw them in through drone vents, as long as you're okay with up to half the spikes deploying on your side of the wall. In other situations, the tracks can watch your back by causing defenders to have to make noise before moving through an area, or just plain reroute them as they decide avoiding them altogether is the easier choice. By spoiling stealth approaches from vigils and calves to some degree, you'll counter a few of those surprises too. And it's certainly a lot of fun to mess with a smug clash who thinks she can safely move around while protected until she finds herself surrounded by them. The intel gathered from sound alone as defenders try to remove them, even if they don't wind up causing any damage, is worth their weight in gold.
Now there's even more content coming soon with Mozzie's operator profile and even more videos on tips and tricks for the new operators and map. So if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. Click that notification icon so you're alerted as soon as new content and news are available. You can also follow me at IcyCat25 on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.